Hello everybody, Steven here with Cardboard Coalition, and today I figured I'd bring you a how to play of Hijacked. This is a greenest games game. It's for ages 14 plus. It, uh, you could play one to four players, and it's 20 minutes per player. Alright, let's get into it. So like a lot of games, they don't tell you to put out the game board. That's pretty obvious. Put out your game board. Once you go ahead and you put out your game board, each player picks a color. All right. Once they pick their color, they get their two die in that color. They get their communication disc in that color. They get their um, thumbs up. I can't remember what this is, but it's the thumbs up in their color. And they also get their um, scoring track marker. There's a name. I don't remember what it is in their color. And they get one Intel, right? They get one Intel demand. Well, it's not really an Intel demand, but an Intel. All right. So once they do that, then each player picks their scoring track. Now, I've kind of put them down for this how to play in matching color, but you don't have to. Blue can go to any of these. Red can go to any of them. Yellow, so on and so forth. And what you'd want to do is you want to pick your track or you can pick your track. And the reason you might want to change tracks is because bonuses happen at different times. This one would give you a um, Bitcoin when you get four points. This one, you don't get Bitcoin to your six points. This one, you don't get Bitcoin down here, but you get something else earlier, right? So the um, scoring tracks are different. So you don't have to match your color that you picked with your scoring track. You can just go ahead and pick a scoring track. All right. Next, after that, you take the passenger cards, you give them a good shuffle, right? Shuffle them all up and you take the top five cards and you put them in the box. You don't look at those cards. I believe it's for just the randomness of the game, but I mean, there's a lot of cards. I don't know why they do it, but they do. So you put the top five cards in the box, you throw them out, don't need them anymore. And then you put six, well, don't throw them in the trash, throw them in the box, you don't need them for the game. Then you put six cards face down along the um, hostage track, the passenger track. All right, once that's done, you go ahead and take your hijacker tiles and you shuffle them. You can put them like that so you don't see what they are. You shuffle them up and you put four hijacker tiles out. And then once you put the hijacker tiles out, you also want to put out the hijacker turning tokens and you want to put it with the fist facing up. That's the starting position. And you put it right there so they're ready to go. All right, hijackers, passengers ready to go. Hijackers ready to go. Um, Next, you go ahead and you take your um, influence, right, with the, uh, well, this is the influence track, but your influence with the hijackers, the cubes, basically, the, the cubes. You take all your red and your green cubes, the big cubes, and you go ahead and you dump them in the bag. So you dump those in the bag, you put them right there, ready to go. The other thing you do is you take the... Um, star token and you put it in its designated spot which is up here bloop, bloop. all right we're ready to move on to the next thing next what you do is you go ahead and you take your um, demands that's what it's called yeah it's the demands right yeah it's the demand tokens so you take these number tokens the demand symbols on the back that's the little demand symbol I want something I want something uh, there's six of them you shuffle them up and you go ahead and you put those out on the board randomly. So you want to put them randomly there. So shuffle them and just put them out. The extra two go back to the box. You don't need those for the rest of the game. Then after that, you go ahead and place all your demands in here. You have your medicine. You have your Bitcoin. Um, you have your food. And then you have your Intel. It's color coded. And of course, they all have little pictures. My hands are a little cold. I can't grab things right now. Right? It shows a little needle. This just shows a little two on it, but it's yellow, so it's, you know, that. And then you have your food, which is like a soda and a pizza, a slice of pizza. So you put your demands in there, and you also put your mini dice in there. These are your mini dice. And we'll talk about how you get mini dice later on. Hint, hint. All right, so <laughs> once you do that, you go ahead and you put out your wooden passengers and your wooden pilots. Your wooden passengers are these blue ones. Right? And they go in their designated spot. If you can see right there, there's a little passenger. And then you have your wooden pilots, which are the yellow ones. Right, And they go into their designated spot. Right, It's just to divide them up. And go ahead and set them right there. 
After that, you set up your bonus dice. So you have your bonus dice right here. And if you're playing with one or two players, you only put one die out. And if you're playing with three or four players, as it shows you right there, you put two die out. You put both the bonus die out. All right. So then you take your medals, which are up here, and you randomly shake them up face down so you don't know, and then place out your medals along the top. And then um, with the medals, you also want to put out your objective token. So you have a handful of these, so you just randomly grab one. And let's see if I can grab it. Like I said, my hands are a little cold right now. I don't know why. It's two-sided, right? So there's your little bonus token. You slide it under there. It lets you know what medals you get when you hit that stuff. All right. So once you've done that, you go ahead and shuffle your bonus tiles over here. So you give these a shuffle and you stack them all right here in their designated spot. So your bonus tiles all go right there. All right, I'm just bumping everything as I move through. All right, bonus tiles. All right, then you go ahead and you take your thumbs up. Each player takes their thumbs up and they put it in the designated spot, which is the one with no numbers. Everyone puts a little thumbs up right there. Thumbs up. All right. After you place your thumbs up, the next thing you do is you figure out um, how many players you're going to play with. So in this case, we're playing with four players. You go ahead and take your SWAT police and you put them on the four. Now, depending on how many players, it will shift. So if you're playing with three, it goes to 10. If you're playing with two, it goes to 15. If you're playing with one, you go to 15, right? So because we're playing with four, our little SWAT team goes to eight. Oh, they call it the police team meeple, but I mean, that's straight SWAT. All right. So once that's all ready, we're good to go. We're ready to play this game and win the day. Now, what this game is, is you are negotiators and you're negotiating to um, release the hostages right? You're trying to release the pilots and the hostages. And you do that by meeting demands, and we'll go over all that to get the hostages released, so on and so forth. But what you're fighting against as a group, you're fighting against the SWAT team that's slowly working their way up to um, break into the airplane, which will cause arguably more damage. Um, so you're each a, a, a negotiator trying to negotiate the terrorists down. You're trying to get passengers off the plane. You're trying to get terrorists, um, hijackers, sorry, not terrorists. You're trying to get hijackers to surrender, right? Things like that. All right. There are two ways that this game ends. The first way that the game ends is when one player gets one, has gotten one pilot out. And we'll talk about how you do this and three passengers. So once someone gets one pilot, three passengers, the game's over. Everyone else gets to do their turn, they get to play through their turn, and then you do scoring. Because the other thing you're doing as negotiators is you're trying to see who's the best negotiator. So you gotta work together to try to keep the police um, SWAT team from storming the plane, but you also um, are trying to make the most points. Right, you're trying to be the best negotiator. So the two ways that you lose is SWAT team gets all the way over here, game over, everyone loses on the table. No one wins if the SWAT team makes it to this track. And it's at the end of the turn, they move one forward. If they make it there, game's over, no one wins. If you get, someone gets three passengers and one pilot off the plane before that, then you go ahead and you do scores and you see who has the um, highest points. But we'll talk about that once again at the end. But that's how the game ends. Now, how do you get to that point? So I'll try to explain it really basic and then we'll go into depth of what each thing does. So what you're basically doing is you got your two dice and you're rolling your two dice. You get numbers on those dice. Based on whatever you rolled, there are places you can go and things you can do. There are areas like this, when there's two spots, you have to put two dice down. You can't put one spot or one die down. And you also have to match the numbers. So you'll see a lot of them will say things like one to six, one to six, one to six, one to six. But when you're placing here, there's a certain way to place them. But in these areas, you can place one die, right? You could place one die, as long as you meet conditions, one die, one die. 
And then some places require both your dice, but we'll talk about that as we go through. So you roll your dice and you place them to do actions on the board, right? So this is how it works. The, the um, game round overview, right? So how the game goes is you do an action phase, you do a police phase, right? And then you do the end phase, right? So let's start with this. So let's go with um, the action phase. And during the action phase, all four players go before the police go through their police phase. So first we're gonna do the action phase. So action phase, as I said, you roll your dice, you place them somewhere on the board and you do those actions. Remember, if it shows two dice, you have to put a die in both those places. If it shows one, then you put one die there. So the first thing we're gonna talk about and it's going to be a little confusing, but it'll make a little more sense after we talk about um, the choosing a reserve card. So you do one of two things. You either play a um, card or you reserve a card, right? It's one of your actions. So you can choose and play or reserve a card. These are passengers, right? These passenger cards. So you roll your dice. So let's take this example. We have a one and a three. Um, so just for a better example, we're going to, we're going to pretend like they rolled a two and a three, right? Now they have some options they can do, um, but they're deciding to go with the first one, which is passengers. So this one has two, two, this die can go to one of these cards, right? So once the die goes there, you go ahead and flip the card, right? Now you have a choice. Are you going to play this card or are you going to um, discard the card? Now, if you play the card, right, you have to meet demand. So I'm going to show you guys some other ones. This one says your, um, I can't remember, but your um, faith that the hijackers have with you has to be at a certain percentage. So hers is 30. We're not at 30% yet. And we'll talk about how you get there. Like this guy is, um, this is a red card, so I don't know why I showed you that one. But you have this person, it would be 10%. We still don't have 10%. And you would also have to have a food that you can give back to the main supply. So red would have to have a food to give back to the main supply. So you have to meet the demands, right? So it is kind of the, uh, why can't I think of the word? The trust that the uh, hijackers have with you, so on and so forth. So right now, all we need is trust, but we don't have the trust. So we can't play this card. So what we end up doing is we discard this card and we get one point down here on the track because we discarded that card. Now, the next thing we do is we flip over the two adjacent cards, the one to the right and the one to the left. If you're right here, you only do the one to the left. If you get a card, say you flip this one, you would flip that card, but not this one because it's already flipped. All right, now that this card is flipped, this player still has one extra die. They can choose to reserve one of these cards. So they can go like that and say, I reserve this card, right? Now, um, after they do that, you go ahead and you replace this card right here with another face down card, like that. All right. And then at the end of the round, the, or the end of their turn, the player takes back all their dice unless they have a die reserve. So red would take back their die. Right now, this is reserving the card, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Now, one thing we want to talk about is the different colors. As you notice, there's different colors of cards. Right? We have gray, we have gray, we have blue, yellow. We'll talk about red in a second. We have green. Right? Um, I feel like I'm missing a color. I'm not. Gray, blue. Oh, gray, blue, green, um, and yellow. There's four colors. Right? There's actually five because red. So. The reason you might want to play a card, so let's say like this one, if you decide to play the card, let's say they hit the number, let's just for argument's sake say they went there. If they play this card, and I can't pick it up on this board, um, if they play this card, it goes down into their area. And we'll kind of set it right here so you guys can see it. So a played card, if they decide to play instead of destroy the card, goes down this area. They have to be able to meet the demands to play the card. Now. The reason they wanna do this is because if they have two of the same color, so if they were to later on get another gray and be able to pay 
um, what needs to be paid and get them out, they have two colors, they can go ahead and save a uh, passenger, right? If they have three of the same color, they can go ahead and save a pilot, right? So the other thing you have to remember is you could only have five cards in your hand. So that is why you would want to grab um, the different colors. That's why you want to collect up the different colors is to be able to two of the same color for um, passengers, three of the same color for pilots. Now, something goes on here. The other color that we have in here is red, right? We have the red card. So let's go ahead. Yeah, these aren't the easiest cards to pick up, especially with this board. All right, let's go ahead and flip these. Nope. Flip these over. Boop, 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 boop. And we're going to replace this with this one because we know what it's going to be. So for argument's sake, let's say um, the players rolled, right? And they got a four, right? And they said, oh, you know what? I'm going to try to see if I could negotiate this passenger off the plane. So they go ahead, they flip the card. And it's a red because it's the card they choose they were choosing to either um, play or discard now you have to do what red says red says negative um 10 um with i can't remember the name of it the respect the connection um negative 10 um it doesn't say it right there too it just immediately negative 10. So your influence with the hijackers. So if you, you would have to drop down 10 instantly when this red card pops up, right? Once that happens, once you do that, you take this card, you put it in the discard, you flip the other two cards like normal because that's the card you played like that and you go ahead and you put another card out. Now, if another negative um, one pops up like this because you weren't choosing to play that card, this card does not subtract any um, points from you, any negative points, right? Or any, from your influence, from everybody's influence over here. All right. So the next thing we want to talk about is reserving cards. So this is, right now what we are talking about was the um, player discard a passenger card, choosing to do that action. Now let's go back and say Red had reserved this card, right? So let's say we've gone all around, it's Red's next turn. Not on the turn that they reserved it, but their next turn. They can choose, they still get to play a die, so they only get to roll one die because one's being reserved. They have that two, they could decide to put it somewhere where they can put the two, right? And then if they have the demands, because this card's reserved, they would take it as their second dice action, right? Is they would take this card. Now they would have to have one Bitcoin and the influence with the um, hijackers would have to be at 70%. He's a pretty popular person, right? If um, your dice here on your turn, you have one die reserving someone, and you can't meet the demands, then you have to discard this card, right? You would take this card, you would go ahead and discard it, and just like any other one, it would move you up one track. When you discard a red, you don't get a move up one on, on the track, just so you guys know. So... The other thing is discarding the card or being able to play the card, hitting the demands and playing it into your hand, you get the die back. You don't get to use that second die on that round. It kind of just goes back into your supply. So that is reserving the cards. All right. I don't know why I'm flipping them back this way, but I just, I want it to look pretty. All right. The next thing that we can do, because you remember we're talking about our actions that we can do. We can build trust. That's what it's called, trust, sorry. I kept calling this influence, this is trust. You can build trust, right? So let's say old Blue over here rolls their dice. Hopefully we can roll enough to do it. All right, so Blue has a two and a five. And Blue decides to go for trust over here. And to be able to do that, they have to have a one to three. So they meet that, and then they have to have a four to six. So you see that number right there, they meet that one. Now, one of the things that I'll point out right now is this is telling you how many points you can possibly get from doing this action. So they go ahead and go there, and what you do is one by one you take cubes out of this bag. So you shake it, you blindly reach in there, and you pull out a cube. So you get a green. Green's a good thing to have. You put it in the um, lowest most spot. So 10, 20, 30, right? 40, 50, 60, 
obviously you're building up your trust. Now you can do this up to three times if you've placed dice there, three times. You can stop at any time you want, but you can do it up to three times. And I would say you don't stop till you get red. All right, so blue player got one cube out. They go ahead and they're going for the second one. They pop it out, wah, 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 it's a red. And what that means is it doesn't go down here. Red gets thrown back in the bag, right? And that is just the end. No points, you stopped. You've gotten the trust with the, the um, hijackers uh, up by 10%. Now, at the beginning, if your first, first draw is a red, let's say the first diet, our first cube that we pulled out of the bag is a red. It doesn't go down. It goes back in the bag. Your turn's over, but blue would still get one point for that first red. So if you've already had green out and you get a red, it just stops it. If red is your first one, it stops you, but you get one point. Now, trust, what we have here is the first person to get the trust up to 100%. Takes everybody to work on this trust, but the first person to put it at 100% gets the star, and that is the, it's five extra points at the end of the game. So they would just take the star and put it in their supply with the rest of their stuff. All right, then at the end of the turn, of course, you take your dice back and you put them over here. So, after you do that, or the other thing that you could do in your actions, so we got um, player discard passenger, we have trust, then we can go over here and we have um, the hijackers. And what we could do is we can we could try to persuade them to surrender. So, let's say white takes their turn, they roll their dice, hopefully it's something we can work with. All right, so here we go. So you can choose based on what rolls you need to have here. One to three, four to six, one, three, or five, two, four, six, one to three, one to three, right? Four to six, four to six. So they're gonna say, hey, I wanna choose to try to persuade this hijacker to surrender. What you do is you put your two dice there. You go ahead and, so we don't forget, you take your communication dice. That means you're communicating with this hijacker. No one else can communicate with this hijacker for the rest of the game. And you go ahead and bump them up one. So you turn this to a one and white would get one point for working on communicating with the hijacker. End of their turn, they take their dice back. Remember your communication disc stays there to tell everybody else that is your hijacker you're talking to. All right, the next thing um, that you can do is you can, um, have the police team, it's a SWAT team, they keep right having police team. So you can have the police team retreat one, but you cannot do this action until you're two rounds in. So let's say we're, we're two rounds in for this example, right? We got old yellow here, they roll their dice, tell us we got what we need, we got what we need, man. So what they can do is they can put their two dice here, right? And they, get to um, roll back the uh, police, right? So the police get to, you get to roll them back. They go one, two. Remember you can't do this the first two rounds and you can push them past their starting point, right? But you have to be at least two rounds in to use this, to be able to do this action. So they can bring them back too. They would take their little thumbs up and they go boop, boop. And they go to that number one thumbs up which will get you some points at the end. And then they take the top tile, no, they take two, sorry. It tells you, um, where is it? It tells you somewhere. You take two tiles and you choose which one you want. Can I tell you what these tiles mean right now off the top of my head? I cannot. These are bonus tiles that you can use to do extra things in the game. I don't remember all of the symbols and what they do, but it allows you to do extra things in the game. All right. So once their turn's over, they go ahead and go here. They also get two points, one, two, for bumping forward. And we'll talk about um, the bonuses um, once we go over all the different actions on the board because they would get a bonus for being right there. All right, so the last thing that you can do in here, the last thing that you can do is you can go over here and get demands. So. Let's say we've gone through the whole round, they've moved forward, you take your first player, 
goes to the next person, yada, yada, yada. You take the um, place first player card, right? And you give it to the next person. The police have moved forward. Now we're back to red. Red rolls their die. They have a one and a two. Now they can place one of their die over here if they want, right? So which one do they want? Um, they can go one, because two's not here, it's not one of their options, and they would get one medicine, right? And remember, those are used to get, oh, of course I keep showing people that don't need anything, nice, nice pool. They can be used to get um, passengers off the plane, right? Or play a passenger card, not get them off the plane, but play a passenger card once it pops up. So they put their one there, they look at the track right here, one is medicine, it goes, they get their little one medicine. All right, now, so you guys know how it works. Like I told you guys, medicine, Bitcoin, food, and this is Intel. Your Intel, which we all start with one at the beginning of the game, is your wild, right? Intel is wild, right? Then they got this extra die, and with their extra die, they're gonna do the last action um, that we have on the board. They are going to set their die right here because they can set a one to six, and they are going to take a die, a bonus die. They take that die, they put it in their pool, they use it in the next round. They don't use it in this round, right? And then they go ahead and they grab their dice, they put them right here, and then the next time it comes around to them, they have three dice, they get a roll. Now, two things um, that go on with this die. This die, normally you can only do one um, action with the passengers, with playing a passenger, which puts it into your um, supply or discarding a passenger. But if you have a purple die, right, you can get, you could do two passengers. So in red, if this was their role, they can actually do two passengers and they could still reserve um, a, um, another card if they wanted. But the purple die allows you to play or discard an extra passenger. And then if you've used a purple die, you can use it to reserve a card. If you put a purple die out there to reserve a card, it stays there until that card is someone gets the card or you get the card. Now I'm gonna pause for a second. I realize I skipped this on the reserve. So when reserving a card, right? Let's say blue on their turn reserve the card and we'll just stick with the purple for now. You can actually reserve the card by putting a die that's the same number or higher. So if you rolled a two or higher, you can go ahead and give blue back their die. And now you're saying you reserved that um, passenger. Now there might be a chance for blue to get it back before it comes back to you, but you can reserve the passenger and bump someone off their passenger. All right, now the die stays there at the end of the round when you collect up your dice, unless um, you are going to get the card or someone kicks you off, right? Or you get the card, discard it, or you play the card, then it goes back into the bonuses over here. All right, to the bonus dice over there. All right, now the um, now that that's all done, we can talk about medals and bonuses and which, not medals and bonuses. Um, yeah, medals and bonuses, but the dice down here. So this is how all this works. You have these medals up there. You hit something. Um, this, I'm guessing I'm probably gonna be right on this one, is you get the first person to get their thumb to two would get that medal. And they get, a, they get to set it with them in their supply, and that gives them three points at the end of the game. Um, this one looks like the first one to 18 points on their track. They would get the one medal, and they would first one to 18. Um, from here, that looks like it's a pilot, first one to get a pilot off, but I would look up, don't trust what I said on that one, I would look it up, see exactly what that bonus is. First person to get that bonus gets that uh, medal, right? Now, um, we wanna look at our bonuses that we have on our scoring track. You remember I said, if you land on a bonus, you go ahead and you can get something um, from the supply. Now, there's different ways to land on the bonuses. One of the ways that you can actually land on the bonuses is with your um, demands. So, you can go ahead and get rid of one demand by putting it back in the supply right, to move your person up one space, you get one point, right? So you can get rid of demands um, 
you can get rid of two demands if you want and move up two points. So demands equal points down here it equals your um, scoring track. The other thing you can do with demands is you can take demands, let's say you roll something, you do a roll and you really don't want this, you kind of want this to move up. You can spend as many demands as you want to move the die up one. And it, what it is is change it one way. So if I spent one demand, this four die could become a five die or it can become a three die, right? You can change it to the three pip side. So one demand lets you adjust the die by one. Each demand you spend allows you to do that. Now, there's some extra things to see on this bonus track. I hopefully you guys can see that, but there's a question mark, right? The question mark is choose any demand from the supply. And then you have ones uh, like right here, that's an Intel. Once you, if you land on it, it's an Intel. If you pass it, you don't get it. If you land on it, Intel. Um, food, you have Bitcoin, you have medicine, and then you have um, a mini die. And that's the reason these are mini die. Because you can actually, on a roll, have four die, right? There's actually a bonus if you roll, have four dice to roll on your turn. So how you get the mini die is you have to get to that on your bonus track. And that gives you the mini die. All right, with all that said, then it's in game. So how in game works, like I told you guys, is as soon as one of the negotiators gets three passengers and one pilot, everyone gets there to finish their turn, right? You finish that whole round through, and then you see who has the highest score, whoever has the highest score wins. Um, and then the other way that it loses is at the um, end, when the police move forward, they go ahead at the end of the round, they go ahead and move there. If the police have moved there, game over. No one wins, you all lose. So police move here, no one wins, you all lose. Because at the end of each round, they're moving forward one. Um, if one player gets three passengers and one pilot, then you go into scoring. How do you score, you might say? Oh, well, that's pretty easy. You have your score track down here. You see where wherever your score track is down here, but you have other things to add. You have tiles, remember I said the little wings equal points. Any bonus tiles you have, you add those in, right? Each remaining demand that you have on your person counts as one point, right? If you have the star over here, that gives you five more points, right? Then you also have your um, hostages, right? I didn't, didn't completely talk about your hostages. I talked about the bump up thing. So this is what happens. Your hostages give you bonuses. So let's say right here, cause they're working on the hostage. If they finally negotiate this hostage and what you have to do is turn it all the way to right there. If they negotiate this hostage, they immediately get four points, right? And then this one, if you can see if I can get it close enough. So they'd immediately get four points. And then at the end of the game, this is the end of a game scoring, the amount of pilots they have gets them three points. So for every pilot, they get three points. So you would look at your, um, your, your, I keep on calling them, they're hijackers, hijackers. You look at your hijacker tiles and you go ahead and you score that. Then this is where it gets a little tricky. You, these count towards points um, at, in the game if you have them in your supply, right? But they count as negative points, right? So um, each passenger card not used to negotiate um, a passenger out, right? These cards are to negotiate the passenger out. Each one not used to negotiate a passenger out of the plane results in minus three points. So if this person had these two, they'd have to take away six points, right? So you wanna make sure you use your cards that you're pulling from there. And then last but not least, you go ahead and you look up here and um, it's recognition. I was like blanking on it. Recognition track. And you go ahead and you look at what you have on the recognition track, right? So points from recognition track, yellow would get two extra points. So when you score, just as a brief overview, you use the score that you have on your track, any uh, medals that you have, any extra demands that you have, you check to see if you have the star, you go ahead and see any bonus points, which are the ones in white that you get from the hijackers that you have. 
you take away any points for um, passenger cards that you still have in your supply. And then you add points for um, the recognition uh, track. So any points you have on the recognition track. And once you get all that together, you go ahead and add it up and then you figure out um, who won the game. So that is how you play um, Hijacked from the Greenest Games. I'm Steven with Cardboard Coalition. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.